much. Um, just uh, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Massimo Nocentini. Um, I'm a PhD student and uh, I'm at the middle of my course. I finished my first year last November. And um, my work is supervised by uh, Professor Donatella Merlini and we work at the University of Florence in Italy. Um, today I uh, would like to show you something about algebraic generating functions for languages avoiding preordon patterns. And um, I divided my, my talk uh, in five parts uh, and former we, um, I would like to just uh, do a very quick uh, recall of some basic definitions. And after we tackled the problem of enumerating the language of binary words avoiding a pattern, after we see, uh, we introduce the concept of reordan patterns in order to add, uh, to require an additional constraint on the content of each word. And finally, we see some serious developments and close up formulae for the generic coefficient of some general functions. Um, thank you so much uh, for this nice talk of today, Professor Barry, because my introduction is essentially just some, uh, a very quick review. So we play with uh, reordered arrays, so we have a pair of functions, D and H. We essentially work with a proper reordered array, so H of zero uh, we require to be zero. And this pair denotes an infinite lower triangular array where a coefficient at row n and column k can be computed by the extraction of the n coefficient from the k-fold convolution of function h with itself and then the convolution with function b. Nothing new. Um, again, uh, we have two special sequences, a and zeta sequences, that allow us to express a generic coefficient as a combination from coefficient lying on the, uh, the row above. <coughs> this, uh, we have to split the case where we are considering a coefficient just uh, in the middle of the matrix uh, from the one which lies on the very first column. And for this one, we have to use the zeta sequence. And we have two functional equations uh, which is uh, another, s another way to say what Professor Barry this morning uh, said using uh, the com compositional inverse. Moreover, um, it is possible to generalize uh, these two kinds of combination using the concept of A matrix, which allow us to include in the combination co coefficient that uh, lie on all the row above the, the row which <coughs> on which the coefficient lie. So we can, <coughs> we can write a more complex combination. Moreover, uh, we can state uh, uh, two functional equation which relates function h and function, generating function a. So um, the problem of determining the generating function uh, that enumerates the number of words according uh, to the length has already been studied uh, in the literature and there are some uh, pretty nice works. And now um, in this talk I would like to talk about uh, the enumeration of language where binary words are required to avoid a given pattern. And we denote this language with a calligraphic L with a, a superscript with P, where P is a pattern. And the fundamental notion that uh, underlies all this framework is uh, the autocorrelation vector associated to the pattern P. And in order to define the autocorrelation vector, we can express a very simple procedure. So we start with uh, uh, the pattern and we shift uh, uh, to the right one position at a time. And at each step, <coughs> we, we see if uh, the current prefix matches the current suffix. So first of all, we have a method because we have this, the pattern as it is. Then 
we shift on the right and we have no match. <laughs> Again, we shift on the right and we have a match because we have one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Again, we shift and there's no match. And finally, there's a final match. It is natural to associate to the autocorrelation vector, which is this one, a polynomial, which uh, includes a monomial <laughs> in correspondence to the, le to the tail where we have, we, have <coughs> we have seen a match. So we have a match for t to the power of 0, t to the power of 2, and t to the power of 4. Um, the generative function uh, for the enumerates uh, binary words avoiding a given pattern according to the length is given by <coughs> this explicit definition for function f. Um, in order to take into account uh, the number of bits 1 and bits 0 <coughs> in every word, essentially uh, we augment uh, the function f introducing one more undeterminate. So x uh, is responsible to count the number of bits 1, and y is responsible to count bits 0. <coughs> in order to define uh, these binary generating functions, we enhance in the same way the notion of the autocorrelation polynomial. And in a similar way, we have to split the denominator. <coughs> so if we require to extract the coefficient nk from the bivariate generating function, essentially we are asking for the coefficient that counts the number of binary words avoiding the pattern p having n bits 1 and k bits 0. So if we continue the example seen before for the pattern 10101, we define the, the auto bivariate autocorrelation polynomial <coughs> in order to write the explicit definition for the bivariate generating function f. And this uh, full entry matrix essentially is uh, uh, simply uh, the complete expansion of this uh, bivariate generating function. Um, now we are, uh, we are looking away for, um, in order to work uh, using the reordinal ray theory. <coughs> so we had to break this, this full matrix into um, lower infinite uh, <coughs> matrices. And in order to do this, essentially, uh, we want to break the lower part from the upper part. Hence, we use this mapping for the lower part and this mapping for the upper part. Hence, if we have a coefficient resistance in this position, essentially, if you have at row n and column k, we move that coefficient at row n and column n minus k. On the contrary, if we have a coefficient on the upper part of the full entry matrix, say at row n and column k, we move that coefficient at row k and column k minus n. Now, um, we, we define, um, we denote both matrices with uh, um, with a symbol that we call R and K, which equals F and comma N minus K. So um, R and K denotes the number of binary words avoiding the pattern P having N bits one and N minus K bits zero. So uh, this symbol essentially uh, denotes all the lower part of the full entry matrix. In order to note the upper part in a simple way, uh, we had to introduce uh, the conjugate of the pattern, which essentially is uh, the pattern composed by flipping every bit. So a zero is flipped to one, and the one is flipped to zero. <coughs> and we reason um, in a similar way. So R and K respect to the conjugate pattern by definition is f n comma n minus k 
always related to the conjugate pattern. But this is essentially <coughs> the, the same coefficient that counts the number of binary words avoiding the pattern, not the conjugate, having k bits 1 and k minus n bits 0. And this position is exactly uh, what our maps <coughs> said. Therefore, R related to the pattern P and R respect to the conjugate of the pattern denotes the lower and the upper part. <coughs> now, uh, we are ready to, to introduce the concept of reordered patterns. And the fundamental question that we um, we ask ourselves is uh, what condition we have to require in order to uh, to have two reordered matrices. <coughs> and in order to, to give an answer, we define the notion of a reordered pattern. And P is a reordered pattern if and only the bivariate autocorrelation polynomial has uh, a well precise shape. In particular, we require that each monomial appearing in the polynomial <coughs> um, has to have the same power for both undeterminates. Essentially, this is the same to say that uh, in every table where we have seen a match in the pattern procedure, we, have, uh, we are required to register the same number of bits 1 and bits 0. Moreover, the condition uh, up to front is that the, the total number of bits 1 minus the total number of bits 0 in the pattern should be a most 1 in the absolute value. <coughs> so um, matrices denoted by R related to the pattern and R related to its conjugate are reordered arrays, both of them, if and only if P is a reordered pattern. So now we are ready to state our first theorem <coughs> and uh, we proceed by cases on the value of such difference. So when there is one more bit one respect to the number of bits zero in the pattern, we can define, we can give this explicit formulae for function D and function H. And they are expressed in terms of the correlation polynomial. When the number of bits 1 equals the number of bits 0 in the pattern, we have these explicit definitions. And finally, when, <coughs> when there is a one more bit 0 respect to the number of bits 1, we have these two definitions. <coughs> now, um, I'd like to show you five classes of pattern, and all of them um, depends on a parameter j. And however you choose j, you give, uh, you obtain a reordered pattern. Three of them, the f these these three, these three, are easier, and then we see two that are more complex. So we have three pattern and. The former one said that we have a strip of j plus 1 once and then j is 0. The next one is uh, essentially the conjugate. And then we have a strip of j once followed by a strip of j 0. And we have uh, this instantiation in order to define a uh, generating function that allow us to define um, the reorder array in a precise way. These are the two more complex classes of patterns. And we have uh, one zero, so an alternation repeated j times followed by a one, and it's conjugate. And we see that it's generating, fun <coughs> generating <coughs> functions are um, more complex respect for the easier cases. Um, all of these uh, formulae seems uh, mm, a little dry. So uh, in order to fully grasp the content, 
um, we would like to, to give a combinatorial interpretation for a simple pattern. So um, we consider the pattern 1, 0, and using above formulae, we can define explicit definitions for function d and h, and we get a, a pretty simple array. So we have an infinite lower matrix full of ones, essentially. And if you put attention on coefficient that lies on the very first column, so call it r and zero, um, this coefficient counts the number of binary words avoiding one, zero, having n bit ones and n minus zero, so n bit zero. And we can uh, um, establish a connection with the theory of lattice paths. So we associate a zero to uh, a down step and a one to a rising step. So in order to avoid one zero, essentially what we are requiring to do is to, to do n down steps and then n up steps. So we have only one for every n in the natural. We have only one path which uh, have a valley shaped. Okay, um, the numeration uh, of, of the language introduced so far it gives a, a rational bivariate generating function. Now uh, we would like to require an additional constraint on the content of each word. So we are requiring that every word cannot contain more zero than ones. So um, the enumeration of this new language is no longer regular and becomes more, more difficult. Um, to solve the problem, essentially, uh, we use the generating function for, um, or which is the divided function r, and the fundamental theorem in order to obtain new algebraic generating functions always expressed in terms of the autocorrelation polynomial. So um, we would like to, uh, to study two new generating functions. The former one is S, which denotes uh, the generating function that enumerates the set of binary words avoiding the pattern P, where the number of bits zero not exceed the number of bits one. And as done before, we uh, state this theorem according to the case on the difference with respect to the number, to the, num to the total number of bits one and zero in the pattern. So one, there is one more bits one, we have this explicit definition for function S. When there is one more bit zero respect to the number of bits one, we have this explicit definition. And finally, when the, we have the same, there are the same number of bits zero and one in the pattern, we have this definition. <coughs> the proof uh, is uh, quite simple because it is sufficient to observe that um, for an for counting all the numbers with n bits one, essentially uh, we can choose all, b all words that contain n bits one and zero, one, two, three, up to n bits zero. Therefore, uh, we instantiate with one the undeterminate that counts the number of bits zero, which is, essential, which is a, a essentially the same to say that we do a, a matrix vector product with matrix R with a vector of one, one, ones, which is the same to, to do a row summation. The latter generating function we would like to introduce is the generating function L, which enumerates the set of binary words avoiding the pattern P, where every word cannot contain a number of bits zero 
greater than the number of bits one according to the length. Again, we go by cases, so when there is one more bit one, we have this definition. When there is one more bit zero, we have this definition, which uh, grows in size. And when there is the same number of bits one and zero in the pattern, we have this definition. Again, the proof, uh, for the proof, we manipulate uh, and instantiate the generated, the divided generating function R um, in order to, um, to extract a coefficient that allow us to obtain R <coughs> of R, R comma R minus S that denotes the coefficient that counts the number of binary words that avoid the pattern P that has R bits one and S bits zero. But since we are requiring to count according to the length, we unify both variables. Therefore, we can say T is equals W and we instantiate R with T square and one over T. And this is our definition for generating function L. Um, now I'm going to show some serious development for uh, the five classes of pattern we have seen before. And this is an instantiation for the three easier classes of pattern. And these are the instantiation for function S for the two more complex ones. Um, just to, uh, to have an idea <coughs> of the sequences we get, Consider the very first classes of class of pattern, which is a, a strip of ones uh, followed by a strip of zero. And instantiating j, the parameter j of the pattern from zero up to eight, we get this uh, serious expansion. So um, if you, for instance, if you want to uh, justify this 15, essentially we are requiring um, the cardinality of the set of binary words avoiding one, one, zero, that has three bits ones. And these are the set of binary <coughs> words that are included in the summation, and they are 15. For j equals one and two, the sequence are known in the online encyclopedia of <coughs> integer sequences. Moreover, uh, all the other sequences are all new. <coughs> we instantiate um, in the same way for generating function L, and this is the explicit formula for the three easier classes of pattern, and this for the two more complex ones. And this is, a, this is a table for the analogous and always respect the same pattern. And it's pretty common, pretty curious that for <coughs> j equals one, we have a series that grows pairs by pairs. And we will see in a moment why. Um, as a last step, um, I would like to show you some closest formulae for the generic coefficient of both functions S and L, at least for the three easier classes of patterns and J, zero, or one. And in a recent submitted paper, we give uh, also combinatorial interpretation in terms of inversions of the <coughs> in the pattern and in boxes occupancies. These are the table related to the formulae for the generic coefficient of function L, and we split according to the parity of the generic coefficient. Therefore, um, this allow us to explain why uh, for this expansion we have this curious behavior. So we have to, to look 
for this pattern and j equals one. Therefore, we are interested in very first column and second row. And we see that uh, no matter uh, an even node, we, we have the same coefficient. So uh, key points to take home. First of all, uh, uh, we have an answer, the generating function that enumerates the, a language of binary words avoiding a pattern in order to take into account the number of bits one and zero. After uh, we break the full entry matrix in two infinite lower triangular matrices R and R respect to the <coughs> pattern and its conjugate, and we ask for condition that make them both reordered array. And the condition is that P have to be, has to be a reordered pattern which is essentially to say that the bivariate of autocorrelation polynomial has a well-defined shape. If we require the additional constraint on the content of each word, we can define two generating functions, S and L, which enumerates the language according to the number of bits one and according to the length, respectively. Um, just um, to, um, to provide some further work, uh, we would like to provide some combinatorial interpretation for the two more complex classes of patterns, at least for J in <coughs> zero and one. Um, we have a conjecture and that states that if J is greater than one, all the classes of pattern we have seen if we consider the related reorder array matrix, it seems to be a binomial transformation in all cases for, <coughs> for any J you choose. And finally, uh, we believe interesting to build the reorder graph of matrices R in order to study uh, the meaning of pattern avoidance at the graph level. I think. <laughs> simple to reason about that class of patterns. Yeah, um, I think it's a, a difficult problem to enumerate all the class of reordered patterns. Maybe uh, just uh, if you consider um, palindrome yes. patterns, uh, not all of them are reordered patterns, just only just uh, a subset of palindrome patterns. Just for, uh, we have just um, focused on avoiding one pattern because uh, uh, we start from uh, a safe place because uh, uh, splitting and enhancing the, the varied generating functions allow us to work on with only one pattern. But I think it's a... Because there are formulas for... Yeah, we have a closed patterns. formula and we can uh, play with confidence with it. But uh, I think uh, uh, it's a, a very interesting enhancement and further work to, to consider it, the avoidance of multiple patterns simultaneously. Because you know there are formulas actually. No, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge. I, I control, there are formulas for avoidance any number of patterns. Ah. And it's not much more complicated. Okay. okay Thanks. <laughs> 